Today, I thought I would take you into the hotbed of racing and talk about medication a little bit. And no better place to start than Lasix. Lasix is a very interesting drug because there are two factions of people when you talk about Lasix. You have the extreme left-hand side, and that's people who are vehemently opposed to it, and the extreme right-hand side, and people who are, would fight to the death to support Lasix. And so it's a real hotbed, and no matter where you go or what you look at, Lace, the Lasix issue is not going to go away, and you're never going to get stop, people to stop arguing about it. But maybe at some point we can find some sort of common ground um, on this issue. But to date, we've not been able to find that common ground. We've had two tests on ho horses run by major uh, veterinary facilities. One was the New Bolton Lasix test where they tested X amount of horses without Lasix. And the second one was more recent, and it was the South African study on Lasix. And they, what they do is they do uh, scopings and trachea washes after stressing the horse with workouts and racing. And both of them, interestingly enough, found that 80-something percent of all horses bleed. So... We have 80% of our horses bleeding without Lasix, so clearly this is a problem, and this is something we need to address. And it's been a problem. I've been training for over 30 years. It's been a problem for every one of those 30 years. When I was an assistant trainer for Frank Martin and Laz Barrera and, you know, some great Hall of Fame trainers, we had bleeders then, and we didn't have Lasix. So what Lasix does is we and anybody that takes Lasix, people take Lasix for high blood pressure right now, uh, what it does is it causes you to urinate and the removal of fluids, X amount of fluids from the body, causes a distinct drop in the blood pressure. Does it for a human and it does it for a horse. So by dropping the blood pressure, we find that we are able to control bleeding in horses. Because you got to remember, when a horse is breathing during the course of a race, the air is going in and out of his nostrils at 140 miles per hour. And those very thin capillaries in his nostrils, with the pressure from the blood, will occasionally burst and therefore cause a bleed. And if you look at the South African study and the New Bolton study, 80% of our horses bleed. So it is, without a doubt, Lasix has helped us control bleeding. It is not the wherewithal. It is not the end game. Horses do bleed, even with Lasix. But the incidence of that bleed would have been so much worse if they didn't get Lasix. Now, the dehydration of the horse by giving Lasix causes the blood pressure to drop. So follow me on this. 30 years ago, when I was assistant trainer to Hall of Fame trainers, what did we do to stop a horse from bleeding? We would take their water away 16, 18, 24 hours before a race. Yes, I said 24 hours before a race. No water for that horse so that that horse would dehydrate to the same extent that a shot of Lasix four hours before a race did to that horse. So which is more humane? A shot of Lasix four hours before because 80% of all horses bleed or taking the horse's water away 24 hours before a race to achieve the same thing. I think right now the shot of Lasix is the most humane way to treat a horse, knowing that 80% of horses bleed. Now, what happens to a horse after he bleeds? Well, the blood flows into the horse's lungs, and then it dries. And as blood gets old and dries inside the lungs, the, it becomes infection. And quite often becomes pneumonia. So... By preventing bleeding, we can prevent a heck of a lung infection 
that could turn into pneumonia. And what, are, what does it cost? Well, to cure pneumonia, we have a horse in the clinic right now. When he's done being cured of pneumonia, it's going to be a five, six, seven thousand dollar fix. But a fifteen dollar shot of Lasix maybe could have prevented a bleed that becomes a lung infection or pneumonia. So, I think, I if ever there is a product that is brought to the forefront, and we haven't seen one in thirty years, that helps a horse not bleed or prevents a horse from bleeding, and it is not a chemical that is administered like Lasix the day of a race, Gary Contessa will be the first guy online to sign up for that. And I will be the first opponent of giving Lasix if we could find an alternative. The problem is, with all the science we have and all the people that we have working on it, no one has been able to come up with an alternative that works. Um, let's talk about some other drugs. Now that we got over the, the hotbed, which is Lasix, let's talk about anti-inflammatories and pain medication. Horses, all of these horses are no different than a football team. They're just equine athletes as opposed to human athletes. No human athlete is drug free. It's a rarity. Human athletes get headaches. They get body aches. They get sore feet. They get all kinds of things. I can't imagine a football player who doesn't take two Tylenols or two Motrins before he goes to bed or when he wakes up in the morning. You, ha you play hard and you're an athlete. You need an anti-inflammatory once in a while just for your normal body soreness, for the things you do because that's what you do as an athlete. You work your body. We have here 1,200-pound equine athletes who are under the same amount of stress, training every day, and exercising every day. So we need to give them Tylenol, Ibuprofen, Motrin, uh, Phenobutazone, uh, Banamine. We, these are the same drugs that humans take for their little body aches, and we need to give them to the horses. Horses train hard, and we want them to feel good. We don't want to, in the name of humanity, make a horse be sore he's an athlete you don't want that horse to be any more sore than you want uh cal ripkin to be sore after a after a baseball game nobody would say cal you can't take motrin because you're using drugs well we should be able to do the same thing for horses and we do it but unlike baseball basketball football soccer nobody tells them they can't take a Motrin or a Tylenol five hours before a game, two hours before a game, a day before a game. Yet, the regulated medication in horse racing says we can't take anything within 48 hours of a race. So these horses get led over there with nothing in their system for 48 hours before a race. So by far, Despite what the people who are screaming at the top of their lungs might be saying about horse racing, by far, horse racing is the most regulated when it comes to medication. And you have to remember another thing. Horses can't tell us when they're sore. We have to see it in a very subtle hint, a very subtle way of movement, the way a horse is acting, maybe they're not eating so good. We, a lot of times, it's a guessing game as to when we need to medicate a horse, but we do it to help that athlete and make him feel better, not to mask a problem that might get him injured. Another thing we do when it comes to medication, we use nasal strips. I don't know if anybody out there has ever used a nasal strip, but I have. I put a nasal strip on my nose and it makes me breathe cleaner. It makes me take a better breath of air. Remember, horses breathe through their nose. So if we can make them get more air or feel better about breathing air by the use of a nasal strip, we'll do it. And we really, I use nasal strips on all my horses if it helps that much. How many times have we gotten beat that far? You never know what it may do, but it makes me feel better so I use them on my horses. So nasal strips is another thing we use on a horse. It's not a medicine, it's not a medication, but it, it's another thing we do to possibly 
help a horse go over to the races and do his best. So it's all about helping the horse. It's all about doing what's right. I know there's proponents and opponents of everything from medication to Lasix to nasal strips, you name it. But honestly, we're doing it f to help our athletes perform better. And we are certainly the most regulated business in sports that there is today. Have a great day, everybody.